you this time you produce 1100 units right so this is so there is a problem of top down approach so it means budgets are coming from top management so it creates demotivation among employees as well or sometimes the you know the targets they look impractical or sometimes impossible to achieve so that's why a new term came that is self imposed budget in which the top management they ask from the middle management and middle management they ask from their employees supervisor the those who are direct control of the productions or in charge of those activities they ask them how much you think that you can produce this year or this month and they include they add up those you know numbers and they present it to the top management so there are some pros and cons of self imposed budget as well so advantage is that the individual at all level for the organizations are viewed as a member of the team the employees low level employees they feel that over you know request been heard and since we you know proposed our own for example for example proposed production budget so it's our commitment to produce this much on sometimes you know the words are taken into considerations as well so budget estimates prepared by front line managers they are more accurate because they deal the actual situation over there plus motivation is higher since you gave your words right so a manager who is not able to meet a budget imposed from above can claim that it was unrealistic but self imposed budgets eliminates this kind of excuse right so there are also the uh, cons which is uh, drawbacks of having uh, the the self imposed budget is that sometimes in order to save your job for two or three months you lie or you exaggerate for example uh, you know that you cannot sell 10 cars 10 lamborghini cars in one year and you in order to save your job you exaggerate that or oh, will be selling 20 cars in next year right so sometimes you exaggerate your I mean, according to your capabilities right so self imposed budgets should be reviewed by higher level of manage, ma management to prevent budgetary slacks like i told you the example so most company issues broad guidelines in terms of overall profits and sales so lower level managers are directed to prepare budgets that meets those targets not like that if i said that i'm going to be selling 20 lamborghinis or ferraris in next next year so when those numbers come to the top man, top level management they call your supervisor and say look we feel that there is a budgetary slack which means you overcommitted yourself which looks impractical so we need to talk to that employee whether he is able you know to sell 20 lamborghinis or ferraris in next year or he is just bluffing or just you know exaggerating the stuff in order to save its job right so no matter what the top management must review the numbers as well and confirm and confirm that as well so human factors in budgeting so budgeting are the numbers numbers don't lie and numbers cannot be you know manipulated by its own unless there is a human factor so the success of a budget program depends on three important factors number 1 the top management must be enthusiastic and committed to budgeting process if top management is lazy if top management is not good then that laziness going to be you know inherited in the organization and penetrated to the lower level as well you have seen that kind of you know um, lack of enthusiasm in especially in government departments as well so top management must not use the budget to pressure employees or blame them when something goes wrong that's mostly happened unfortunately 
So in order to save their own skin, own benefits and bonuses, they blame to the lower stock managers. Number three, highly achievable budget targets are usually preferred when managers are rewarded based on meeting budget targets. So you can add it a little bit of reward if you achieve your, your budgeted performances, but you have said that you, you will you know, sell 20 cars. So we will, are you know, going to give you and your family one month holiday in Thailand, or we'll give you a small one bedroom apartment house. So it creates commitment and people are very motivated by doing this kind of stuff. So a budget committee, which is a standing committee, which is responsible for making policies, coordinating the preparation of the budget, resolving the dispute, like I told you, there is a constant fight between production and marketing department, and also is responsible for approving the final budget. Right? Okay, now from here, we are starting or diving into the numerical stuff. Up till now, any question? Alima, Ayan, Stella, Crystal, Jackie? Okay. So, a master budget overview. So, you see that here, number first budget. that what number first we forecast sales because everything depends on sales. So this is a master plan. So you see when, we, when you forecast the sales, then you decide that how much is the selling expenses budget, how much is the production. From production, you can easily you know, derive what would be our raw material cost, what would be our salaries to the labor, and what would be the manufacturing overhead. And all these combined, you can find out the cash budget. And from cash budget, you can make the budgeted income statement and budgeted balance sheet. So number one most important stuff is forecasting of the sale budget. So remember that famous quote that garbage in, garbage out. If your forecasting here is not good, then that garbage is gonna be transferred to these budgets and also our budgeted income statement and budgeted balance sheet, gonna, you know, they won't be very reliable, right? So that's why most of the, you know, the hardest part of any budgeting committee is to accurately forecast the sales budget because every budget depends on sales budget, right? Okay, so let's move forward. Okay, here comes our second learning objective that is prepare a sales budget, including a schedule for expected cash collection as well. Let's talk about this. So we will be carrying out through, you know, post slide, the Royal Company example here. So, so Royal Company is basically preparing budgets for its quarter ending June 30th. So remember, it's quarterly budgeting. So quarter starts from, it's ending June 30, April, May, June. So they have budgeted sales for the next five months, April, May, June, July, August. And their selling price is 10. So lucky you that you would be given those units because in order to calculate where this number came from, it depends on the mathematical, complex math mathematical equation, econometrics, economy, you know, different kind of pure mathematical techniques or some kind of actuary as well. So at this level, which is very basic level, you will be giving these numbers. Otherwise, this is, I told you already that this is the hardest cost to calculate that what will be the units sold in our April, May, June, July, August, right? You will be given 
these numbers. The selling price is $10. So now can you calculate the budget? So what will be the approach sales? Easy. 20,000 multi 20, multiplied by 10. So budget sales in dollars, 200,000, simple, right? The concept should be, you know, correct. Otherwise, this is just like a, you know, normal mm, multiplication and subtraction stuff. So how we make the budgets? So we see the budgeted units, the sale price, and that would be the budgeted sales in dollars. We have April, May, June. So we are making the quarterly budget. So that's why we just stopped till June. So that question that should, you know, if, if arised in your mind that where are those July and August units? Because we are making the quarterly budget till June. So where this total budget came from quarterly budget, you just add all these. April budgeted sales plus May budgeted sales plus June budgeted sales, it is 100,000 units multiplied by the sale price per unit and $1 million sales budget for your next quarter starting from april ending june right any question okay now the next logical budget is the cash collection budget 